We have learned a great deal about the risk of subsequent dementia to people in the military, especially those who have suffered uh, one or more traumatic brain injuries, in part because we have now so many veterans and so many good ways to analyze the data. Certainly the technology we have has been very helpful in trying to reduce or minimize brain trauma that occurs in the war zone. We are now trying to find ways to minimize, deflect, or otherwise neutralize blasts so that they themselves don't cause damage to the brain or problems that would lead to subsequent disease later in life. During my initial deployment in Iraq, I got to see firsthand how traumatic brain injury and concussions were being cared for by our service members. And through working with a team of very talented members from both the civilian community and within the military, we were able to develop a new set of guidelines that are still being used today that allows us to better identify our service members who are exposed to concussion in the battlefield. Another very important contextual difference for our military is the act of being injured in a combat zone itself can be a very psychologically stressful one. It's possible that this might can, uh, lead to an even greater risk for long-term complications such as dementia. One of the very exciting things about this initiative is that it was truly a team and collaborative effort. And what we're seeing is a collaboration between the Alzheimer's Association, between the peer-reviewed Alzheimer's research program. One of the important things the paper does is it points out some of the gaps of research that we have and areas that we need to further focus on. So I believe the big take-home message is early screening, thinking about this, being concerned about this very early on with regularly monitoring of these veterans who might be at risk.